What's up guys? My name is Wes, this is Peace Parts, and this episode we're going to be doing stuff quite a bit differently than what we've been doing so far. So we're, we're taking a break on working on the actual cars, um, and in this episode we're going to be working on making some super cool uh, custom Miata LED turn signals, running lights, and uh, the goal in this, uh, this is going to be a new series, the goal in this series is to uh, show you guys what I'm doing as far as making these things, uh, how I'm making them and what all I'm using and basically show you guys my entire process of making these things. So I've, I've made these before and uh, these, are the, these are the ones that I have made obviously and um, the, I had this for the running light and then I had just a solid bar that fills in the rest of it for the turn signal and uh, that was really cool but I really wanted to do, uh, well what I wanted to do from the beginning was to make them sequential. So. I've uh, done quite a bit more research on it, and I've, uh, I believe I've figured out everything that I need to do, all the components I need to get, and how to wire everything up to make them actually sequential. So, this series, I'm going to go through how I designed them, how I laid out the wiring, how I actually made them, how I modified my OEM housings, and uh, show you guys how I make them sequential and everything. So, let's get into it. So, getting right into it here, this is how I started designing my, uh, my custom LED panels. So, I basically I took some rough measurements from the uh, split apart OEM front turn signal housings and uh, kind of laid out my overall shape that I believed I could fit in there with some trimming and stuff. And uh, this is what I came up with. And I knew I wanted to use 5mm LEDs, which is what these, this circle is. Uh, the circle is just the right size for one of those LEDs to pop into place and be in there really secure. And uh, each one's got a plus and a minus uh, lead coming off of them. So that's what I did on each one here, laid them all out as, as uh, how I wanted it, and then I could use the uh, plus and minus to lay out all my wiring. So I've got my uh, running light here, uh, which is the orange circles. That's, uh, that's the shape that I wanted my running lights to be. And then the, the rest of this here was just all together for the turn signal. It would just the entire panel would be on when the turn signal is on and then uh, when the turn signal is flashing off this panel would be off and the running light would stay on. So that was how I did the original ones. I, did, I laid them out just like this with uh, a set of six LEDs in series and then that set of, of six was in parallel with another set of six, parallel with another set of six and so on and uh, the same way with the running light so six there, six there, six there, there, there and there. And then um, that was basically how I ran the first setup of, of lights and it worked pretty good for a while until uh, they started having problems with a couple of them would, a couple of the panel, uh, the sections would be flickering or a section wouldn't turn on at all and I just had a bunch of problems with that and the main reason that I had all the problems with it is because I didn't do my research beforehand and didn't put any resistors in any of these circuits at all. Now with LEDs, uh, you really kind of have to have an LED in the series circuit uh, to stabilize the LEDs out. And uh, I could go into the long explanation of it, but it's really nerdy and long-winded. But basically the gist of it is that you need to have some sort of resistance in each circuit, in each series circuit. So uh, I knew that I needed to redo that, so I redesigned them basically for this. And this is the same exact configuration. I have just my running light, my turn signal, and my ground. Same three wires that would be connected to the OEM uh, set up with a, an actual incandescent bulb. And I broke them off into sections of three over here for the running light with a 470 ohm resistor in line with them. And then those were uh, that set of three was in parallel with another set of three and so forth. And for the turn signal, I could just use uh, a set of series of six with a 100 ohm resistor or do the same thing with a 470 ohm. Uh, it, this this way just kind of decreases the amount of resistors that I need to do and uh, makes it a little bit cheaper. But anyway, the the other reason for this that I can run six in series and have the 100 ohm resistor is that you kind of want to design your panel for about 14 volts, which is not what I did initially. I initially designed them for about 12 volts, uh, but when a car is running, you have about 14 volts depending on how good your alternator is and how much load there is and la da 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 
but you, you typically will have anywhere between 13.5 and, and 14.5 and volts uh, coming anywhere in the actual circuits unless there's uh, components in there to reduce that down to 12. And uh, so basically what I'm doing, I've done, is design them to work for 14 volts um, or 12 volts or basically anywhere. And when I was doing some of my testing here on, my, uh, on the bench, I was able to turn it up to about 20 volts before I even had really any issues with them. Uh, so then that, I, I know that I should be able to be okay with the amount of resistors in here. So this setup is just for my, like my old style, just for a non-sequential light. And so it would be the same as, like I said earlier, this would all be turned on at once uh, for the turn signal. So when I was re redesigning them for the sequential setup, uh, I came up with this, which is the exact same configuration, exact same layout as before. Um, running light's actually identical to how it would have been before, uh, but I changed quite a few things. So this light is going to have a shared positive signal for every single series circuit. They're all going to be shared to the same switch 12 volts on my car. Uh, so that'll be the only new wire that I'll have to run for these components. But the uh, modules that I'm using to control the sequential part of it uh, is a ghost module and they work on doing using a switched ground. So each one of these uh, gray lines here represents my one channel um, and uh, it's actually the ground lines, red's power obviously. And so when I designed them, I split it up. Like I was saying earlier, I could do the uh, set of six here or the set of three. I split these up into sets of three because um, at, when I was testing them, I believe that the set of three with a higher resistance is quite a bit more stable than a set of six with a low resistance. And uh, I mean, I'm not an electrical engineer, but that's what I've discovered just from me kind of testing them out. So I've got a set of three 470 ohm resistor a set of three 470 ohm resistor, and those are connected to the same ground point, which will be the same channel on the ghost module. So this panel will have 12 channels here, as you can see there, one, two, three, four, all the way to 12, and then the running light will be channel 13. So that was kind of how I designed the actual wiring portion of it, and uh, then basically what I needed to do is I needed to have a way to uh, arrange these LEDs in a nice smooth and nice even layout where all the LEDs would be evenly spaced, uh, the panel would be nice and flat, um, and I wouldn't have to go through and manually drill every single one of these holes because uh, that would take just forever. And basically what I decided to do was take this AutoCAD drawing that I have, get rid of all the wiring stuff in it, and go to SolidWorks, make a 3D part, so it's the exact same panel. Uh, it can be used for either side, depending on which side you poke the LEDs in from. And then basically what I was going to do is just take the LED, the leads from the backs of them, fold them over, solder them together, uh, run some wires for my power rail and ground rail and whatever, and uh, then that would be it. And that's exactly what I did the first time, and it worked really, really, really well. Um, after I got done running all the wiring, then I built some sides just with some masking tape, and then filled the whole thing up with epoxy to uh, pot everything and make sure it all stayed firm. So I uh, modeled this up, 3D printed it, and then poked the LEDs in there. That worked great. So moving on to the actual programming for the sequential stuff, uh, I'm using the ghost module, like I said, ghost lighting module. Um, they've got a 28 channel uh, sequencer module that you can use. And uh, you can order them on their site with no coding or anything. You can, and uh, you run all your wires to it, and then set up all your channels and everything, program it all, and uh, then you have your sequential lights. So I wanted to use the one module for both front turn signals. Um, and it's got 28 channels in it, and I'm using uh, 26 of those channels on this from this module. So I knew I had plenty of room. But there are a couple different things you have to make sure that you have set up in the actual sequence designer software here. Um, and one of those is the switchback uh, style, I guess is what it's called. And uh, so basically the switchback is when the, the light is white and then it switches to amber for the turn signals, blinks for the turn signal, and then when the turn signal is done, it switches back to the white LEDs. And uh, that's cool, but that's not what I wanted to do. And so I 
click this little box here for turn signal and non switchback that makes my uh, other input to this module the second line for the turn signal so then I programmed out my uh, code basically for the actual turn signals here um, and it's just really pretty simple uh, you just click on the line you want and click the checkboxes for which uh, channels you want on go down the line and it's pretty simple and uh, so I did that for turn that's turning on my pa uh, right turn on my passenger side here would be a left turn going through on the driver's side and then I also have the uh, show mode set up which basically just chases LEDs back and forth I can kind of show you that real quick here so that's what the show mode would look like there it would just chase back and forth and uh, that would just be activated by a, a switch that I would just send a 12 volt uh, power to or 14 volts however you want to look at it and uh, so that's pretty much all of the design that I did to get the LED panels to where I'm at started with an AutoCAD sketch basically laying everything out so I could uh, keep track of everything printed the panels and then um, and then we get to the, the wiring portion of it okay so I know that was a lot of information that's why I'm breaking this up into a few different videos uh, to kind of spread out some of that information and make these videos not so long uh, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick uh, when you wire them up without any resistors in there and you get some of that unstableness you get something that ends up like this so sometimes you might have one like my uh, driver's side one here that works completely fine and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it um, but then the passenger side up here is just going crazy uh, and I've got a section here that doesn't turn on and uh, sometimes if you you know play with the voltage a little bit then you can control so right now they they look fine they're not blinking this section is still off but that cranked it all the way down to 10 volts so uh, when your car is running you'll have something more like you know 14 volts or so and uh, you get the weird flickering so that's what I'm hoping to try to fix and uh, you know, overcome in the redesign of them and adding in the whole sequential feature. Um, but you just got to stay tuned for the next episode to see how we actually get into uh, some of the building part of it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is kind of a, a different video. I hope you guys like it. Um, if you do like it, make sure to, to uh, give it a like and consider subscribing because there will be more on this and uh, much more other Miata content to come. So thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.